Hello there, so one of the hardest parts of learning to map is knowing when to stop. Every new mapper has aspirations which aren't easy to reach, and that is a great motivator for an activity as potentially boring as mapping. But unfortunately, not knowing the most effective path to achieve those goals is usually where new mappers go wrong. Every day, I see new mappers persistently pushing for their first maps to be ranked. They're asking for mods and help from other mappers as much as possible, rocketing them up to the top of the pending map list with upwards of triple digit star priority. Considering maps only need 12 star priority to be ranked, such a massive number shows that these maps definitely have been worked on a lot, which should be a good indicator of their quality. From a different perspective though, it also indicates that something's a bit off. Why aren't these maps promoted to rank if they're so far above 12, so far above what's necessary? That's because new mappers almost always repeat the same mistake, trying to achieve their goals too quickly. They take on projects they can't practically handle and then refuse to cut their losses after putting in so much time and effort, which only ends up hindering progress in the long run. Every new mapper experiences this in one way or another, without exception. How they react and adapt to it though ends up determining how effectively they develop Develop. So let's take a look at some guys who made completely different decisions shaping how they became mappers, starting from the lowest of the low. This guy. Sounds like a cheap self-degrading joke, but I'm actually serious. As a new mapper, I made terrible choices, the most outstanding of which being my second uploaded map. Ever since I started playing Osu, I thought the available library of thousands of songs was not diverse enough. You already know the usual hyperbolic complaints. Osu has no western music, 99.9% .9 of maps are anime openings, and so on. I decided I would become the change I always wanted by ranking a map of a song I would never expect to see on Osu. One of a classical piece which we've all heard, Bach's Sweet Number 1 Prelude. Well, this guy's cello cover slash interpretation of it. With that information alone, you can probably think of a good handful of reasons as to why this was a stupid choice, but let's not be so negative right from the get-go. In some ways, this mistake was actually a valuable learning experience for someone just getting engaged with the editor. Starting with the elephant in the room, this song required a complex timing, more complex than any new mapper should ever have to deal with. I sort of asked around a bit and learned pretty quickly that most mappers would never dare touch a song like this, and the few who would had no incentive to help a random no-name mapper like myself. Instead of giving up like I really should have, I decided to persevere on my own. I knew I would never be able to rank this song if I could never get it timed, so I tried to do it myself and failed, over and over again. I would time part of the song, ask someone more experienced how accurate it was, then redo it from scratch because it was all wrong. I went through this process a dozen or so times, wasting far too many hours, finally to reach what should have been unreachable for a new mapper, a mostly accurately timed map. I learned how to manage complex timing thanks to this, something I found pretty valuable. There were still of course some mistakes, but it was a lot better than anyone expected from a mapper without a reputation and so I could finally begin mapping, which was where I ran into a few more problems. Considering I planned on, you know, ranking this, I needed to create a full map set, and that was going to be a challenge. Mapping the highest two difficulties, hard and insane, was surprisingly straightforward. Normal, on the other hand, was a contradictory mess. The purpose of a normal, especially one used as the lowest difficulty on a map set, is to be simple enough to play for people who just downloaded the game. However, that necessary simplicity wasn't easy to achieve because because it clashed with the complexity of the song's timing. Slider velocity was how this initially stood out. It was common knowledge at the time that varying slider velocity too much on a normal difficulty wasn't acceptable, and because timing changed on every object here, slider velocity appeared to as well. For example, this object is placed on a 100 BPM timing point, and moves at this speed. The next object, however, is placed on a 190 BPM timing point, and moves at this speed. A pretty apparent difference, which is by no means means intuitive. The only way I found to fix this was by creating a perceived stable slider speed through manipulating slider velocity multipliers for every individual slider. I chose one number as my base, 211 because it was easy to type, then modified slider velocity so it would be equivalent to a 1 times multiplier at 211 BPM. So like for 100 BPM I would use a 2.11 times multiplier because 211 divided by 100 is 2.11. This was tedious on its own, but it was by no means the worst part. Because normal difficulties required a low density rhythm 
algorithm choice and because timing points were placed in nearly every half a beat, almost every slider passed through one or multiple other red lines. It should go without saying that slider ends on a normal difficulty need to align with sounds in a song, as is enforced with the ranking criteria, but that wasn't possible with this timing. Sliders just aren't supposed to pass through red lines. They're designed to snap only within one timing section, so this was a pretty big obstacle, which I luckily learned of a solution for. By opening the songs folder in the difficulties corresponding .osu file, I can locate any slider in its length variable, which is measured in pixels at a resolution of 640 by 480. If I see a slider needs to be a little bit longer to snap correctly, I bump up the pixel number, reload the map, and check AI mod to see if my object is now snapped. By comparing the millisecond value here and that of the timing point, I can guess numbers until I'm within one millisecond of being correct. This basic idea was actually my first Osu video tutorial. No, not this 10 month old one, it was actually over three years ago now. I made a two minute video explaining how to snap sliders which pass through timing points, just without any editing or planning beforehand. I was so cute. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Back on topic though, snapping sliders like this was obviously not an effective usage of my time. Measuring the length of sliders in pixels according to timing wasn't as easy as punching two numbers into a calculator, so I ended up snapping every slider here with trial and error, which... Oh boy, that was not fun. It wasn't until about a year later that I learned the easy way to do this via minor variations in slider speed. It seems so obvious now, but when I was a new mapper, I just didn't think about it. By changing slider velocity with a green line, a slider's length will change in the timeline, but not on the playfield. Also, despite what the timing panel may say, this input box does keep track of decimals beyond just the first two. So by using precise decimal values, it's possible to snap a slider into a timing point's exact millisecond position. This still required trial and error, but it was a lot easier than messing around in the .osu file, that's for sure. Alright, cool, I learned a few things from this map. It wasn't entirely a mistake, but really, when considering how much time I spent, it's hard to even convince myself of that. This was the second map I attempted to rank, and I spent dozens of hours spanning four months, dealing with all that timing nonsense, as well as actually mapping the song. One part was successful, I learned a fair bit about how the editor and timing worked. The other, though, was hopeless. Osu is just not designed to handle songs like this. It's a rhythm game and this song has no realistically playable rhythm given timing changes with every note. But, I mean, so much time investment already, I couldn't just let that go to waste, so I tried mapping it anyway. Maybe you're thinking I did a decent job, I mean, it doesn't look that bad, right? What you've been seeing so far though, is the version I remapped and ranked last year, which is far better than the mess it started out as. This was the original map. Each difficulty was complete nonsense spacing-wise, especially the lower two. With timing this complex, I just couldn't handle spacing in an intuitive way because time distance equality wasn't reliable. Rhythm-wise, the map was even more problematic. Like, just look at the sheet music for this song. Even if you can't read it, you can tell there's a very repetitive pattern, which meant variation in the map was near impossible. And worst of all, hit sounds were... I don't even want to think about it. I didn't know how to hit sound a song without percussion at the time, so I went through all the effort of key sounding everything. Each pitch in the song was matched by a pitched hit sound. Even more time than I'll never get back. While those timing issues were easily solvable, these ones were not. There was and still is no objectively correct way to handle spacing, rhythm, and hit sounding, so as a new mapper without experience, I couldn't progress at all. I had barely any knowledge about how to actually map, so all these preparations with timing were an utter waste. I kept hauling towards rank regardless, but only in vain. Mods told me how terrible the map was and how circumstances of the song meant little chance of recovery, so after wasting far more time than any new mapper should on their early maps, I finally gave up. Something I should have done far earlier. My ambitions as a new mapper were unrealistic, and because I didn't know any better, I thought persevering was the best course of action. Most of the guys at the top of the pending map list may have different aspirations and may not be screwing up as much as I had, but they still have the same core problem. They were trying to achieve their mapping goals without first learning how to map. Ranking a map is a good thing to strive for, but despite what it may look like, going for it immediately is not the most effective way to reach it. If new mappers could take the same path as a mapper like Nathan, maybe they wouldn't end up wasting so much time. Overall composition wasn't very good. Not much structure and most patterns felt random. This can be much better. Do you really want to rank it like this?
Those words came from an old, outdated mod by Handsome, another mapper who set his ambitions too high. His first map was a tv size anime opening, which began clearly below ranking standards. He begged for mods and improved the map steadily over 4 months, collecting over 100 star priority in that time. Was his map better than when he first started? Yeah, probably. Not so good that it was worth spending 4 months on though. It was still slightly below standard map quality, with the exception of the extra difficulty which was… even further below. Handsome most likely realized his mistake after the map finally reached rank and, intentionally or not, made sure Nathan wouldn't follow in his footsteps. Nathan's goal as a new mapper in February 2015 appeared to be the same as Handsome's, to rank one of his first maps, a tv size anime opening. He went through the natural steps of asking for mods and steadily improving, just like anyone else. As should have been expected though, he wasn't quite experienced enough to reach rank, which was made clearest to him when Handsome posted this mod. According to Nathan, this was a turning point. Through a more humane conversation compared to that over-exaggerated mod, Handsome told Nathan that he had a lot more work to do before this map would be ready, and that the process was probably not going to be fast or easy. Nathan had two choices. He could be like Handsome and push towards rank under all circumstances, or he could move on, and I think he made the right choice. Because of Handsome's mod, Nathan took a new approach to reaching his goal, not one I've seen many others take. Instead of creating map sets which were designed for ranking, he made maps specifically for the graveyard as a form of practice. These weren't joke maps or 8 star jump maps, but rather single difficulties which attempted to at least meet and surpass the quality standards for rank. Nathan understood that if he wanted to get his first ranked map, the most effective way was not to polish his garbage first maps as much as possible, it was instead to have a decent map from the start. So once he had a good understanding of mapping thanks to general feedback from various mappers, Nathan decided to try his hand at ranking a map again, and he was successful. Almost effortlessly, his map went through the process and reached rank in in only a few weeks. Nathan is often considered a quick learner compared to other new mappers, and I think part of that is because he chose to spend his time in a relatively unconventional way. Unlike most new mappers who focused on only one big project or goal, Nathan chose to take smaller, indirect steps through each of his practice maps, which led to his faster development as a mapper. Setting high ambitions isn't a problem, but not knowing when to stop can turn it into one. Why do we see some full sets of average TV size maps in the love section? Because mappers are trying to rank their maps before learning how to map, resulting in tons of mods and therefore triple digits worth of star priority and easy meeting of loved minimum requirements. Don't be dumb like me and waste time on large scale mapping projects that you can't practically complete. Be like Nathan and learn to map first. Anyway, thanks to these guys for supporting this video and maybe check out this Osu podcast I guessed it on if that sounds worth your time. I'll see you next week.